Welcome to Venue.Events, where we bring you exclusive insights into extraordinary venues and experiences. In today's episode, we will take you to a unique journey through time and innovation as we explore the incredible world of transportation at the Heritage Transport Museum. Today, we extend our warmest greetings to Mr. Taryn Thackrail, the visionary founder and managing trustee of the Heritage Transportation Trust. Hello, my name is Ragini Bhatt. I'm the curator at the museum. So this is India's first uh, comprehensive transport museum. And we talk about the evolution of transport in Indian context. So inside we have different uh, galleries which talk about the history of transport, how the transport has evolved since the uh, coming of the field. So we are in this section where we are going to see this exhibit about the evolution of the wheel from the beginning. So this uh, entire section talks about the journey of the wheel since ancient times, how the first wheel came in Mesopotamian civilization and how it has evolved through different historical style periods. Like the early wheels, they were used for animal driven carriages and with the technological advancement and the uh, evolution of civilizations, the wheel also transformed through different time periods. So now the journey is still going on. So we cannot say that the journey of wheel has ended. So now the evolution is continuing. These days we have the tubeless tires. So the future of the wheels is the ripless tires. So we can say the journey is continuing. There are different sections like the coming of the ambassadors, Hindustan Motors, and the period setup of an old petrol pump. And we'll also take you back even uh, before in the historical time period where we'll showcase the first car that was collected by the museum. I was out of the country uh, in Paris until 1992. I came back in 1993 and I suddenly developed this interest of collecting old lamps, old gramophone tears, old radios. Uh, because I think when you s stay abroad and you come back, you realize that you're missing s your own heritage, right? Uh, and suddenly on one fine uh, trips of mine, I found a car which was very dilapidated, right? Old vintage car, a 1932 Chevrolet. So I picked it up and then brought it uh, back to Delhi and people thought that I have gone crazy that uh, what am I going to do with it? So anyway, it took us two years to restore the car completely and it was on the road again. Okay. And it felt like you've given life to something which was long gone. Uh, so that actually triggered the passion for collecting vintage cars, the vintage and classic cars. So behind me is the first car of the museum collection. So this is Chevrolet Fitton from 1932. So this is the car which flagged off the collection of the museum. So it has been entirely restored with its original parts. And a very interesting fact to know about this car is that it has the registration from Pakistan. That is the undivided India of that time. So certainly within the next three, four years, I had a collection I used to go to on weekends, go travel to you know, smaller towns, smaller cities and pick up these colors which were lying, you know, in all kinds of condition and then give it to my, uh, I, by that time I had a team of people who would be working on these cars and then slowly they came back to life. So the coming of the first automobile in 1885 by Carl Benz completely revolutionized the way people traveled and even India did not leave behind in terms of the development of automobiles. As early as 1898, India got its first automobile and that was the Oldsmobile car. And then it did not look back. So this gallery where I'm standing right now, it gives us a glimpse about the development of car industry in India. We have tried to create a street scene where we have the shops on the one hand and then the display of cars is arranged in the form of the parking yacht. By 2005, uh, it was almost about 12 years since time I started collecting. 
I was actually getting bored of just the few cars. Mm -hmm. So I expanded my horizon into transportation, uh, other modes of transport. The pre mechanized transport section of the museum gives us a glimpse about the traveling in bygone era. When the automobiles had not come into India, how people traveled in those days. So you'll get a glimpse of that in this section. So on this, uh, this side, we have the row of the bullock carts, which were used for public as well as private transport. And the ones which had curtains on them, they were used by women. And then we have the horse carriages on the other side. Some saddles, seats, saddles, horse saddles, camel seats, and elephant seats, and carriage lamps as well. So I started collecting, uh, I collected a bit of the saloon from the railways, uh, old carriages, carts, uh, palanquins, buses, uh, two wheelers. So suddenly the collection grew. Now we are in the railway section, which is more like a, a look of an old railway platform in India. How railway stations used to look like. So we have tried to recreate the period station uh, over here. And this is the highlight of the railway section of the museum, which is Jodhpur Salmon. And this belonged to Maharaja of Jodhpur. This was made in 1930 at Ajmer. And it was used by the dignitaries of Bombay, Baroda and Central India Railway. If you can see the interiors, it is a bidek with the mirrors on the ceilings. And the interiors are done with Burma tape wood. Besides, there are some Rajasthan, traditional Rajasthani uh, painting, which is also uh, done on the seeds. And it gives you an experience of being in that era of royalty and luxury. I was finding it extremely difficult to maintain it because everything requires money. Yeah. Where do you keep them? Or do you have? How many people do you need to manage it? You need space. space. So, and finally, I. I had read about it that the Government of India, Ministry of Culture, gives uh, grants to people who want to build museums in the country. And I had not heard about this before. So I approached them, and there's a particular format, then you have to go and present your credentials to uh, the expert committee. And finally, uh, I was there, and they said that you get your land ready, get your permissions ready and we will give you a grant mm -hmm. uh, to construct the building. And the exhibits were there, uh, the land was there, the land came along and then finally the museum got evolved. And mind you, this is India's only comprehensive transport museum. There is no other till now. Uh, we opened our doors to visitors in 2013, uh, in December of 2013 and this is how we have started. Now, December of 23, so we almost put 10 years old and we still don't have any other transport museum in the country. Coming back to the era of royal transportation. So this section holds some exquisite collection of the palkis. Some of them were royal and some were used by common people. And you can see in this palki, we have all the luxury of that time. You can see the mattress with the cushion. And Palkis also had these finials, which represented the status symbols of that time. You know, we, we were very uh, clear that we built this museum to inspire young, youngsters. Uh, so our main target is schools. You have the generation who, number one, as a part of their education, they do learn about transportation and here, they're able to see the entire gamut of transportation in the clear. So that's one thing which uh, pleases them uh, and also helps them understand their course content very well. Uh, so 40% of our business comes from schools, uh, followed by some college students, also followed by art and architecture students because they haven't seen a museum like this in the country. 20% uh, of our business comes from foreign tourist groups, uh, which are dropped in between Delhi to Jaipur and back. And we are in the brochure series of many international tour operator companies. So that's where regular business comes. Then 40% of our business is normal walking visitors. And these are primarily family groups. 
we also have a minuscule percentage of uh, shootings that happen there. These are youngsters who are making their own videos, uh, you know, music videos or, uh, you know, we've also rented out the music to a movie shoot. And um, so these things contribute a little bit of business, but our target continues to be school children and families. The Air Transport Gallery of the Museum gives us an overview about the early years of civil aviation in India. So here we get the highlight of the aviation section that is the Piper Cup J3C aircraft that had been the training aircraft and its earlier versions they were launched during the beginning of World War II. So when US made its entry into the World War II then President D. Roosevelt, he gave orders for the launch of the lightweight aircraft. So that is how the uh, Piper Cup J3C was launched. So this particular aircraft was produced during 1947. And this was amongst the 18,000 aircrafts that were imported into India. So this aircraft was used at the Lucknow Flying Club. Well, it is expensive, but as long as, you know, uh, I mean, we've crossed over a million visitors in 10 years. So that's been a very encouraging thing for us. Uh, because, you know, in India, uh, the culture of going to museums is not there compared to uh, European or even America, for that matter. Because museums are designed for visitors. They are curated for visitors. So we have tried to do that. And that is the reason we've been successful. Okay. Uh, but yes, Everything needs to change. Uh, we are we, we constantly uh, we, uh, keep changing our exhibits because why would you come there the second time if you've seen it once? Yeah. So there's a constant. We keep on adding exhibits. We keep on changing exhibits. So that's what we've been doing uh, for the last about uh, ten years, and that's the reason we've been successful. Also, I treat museums as a visitor-centric attraction uh, because. Today, like hotels, uh, if you don't have visitors, uh, you don't need to be in the business. We have seen it in COVID times. Yeah, you've, you've seen that. Yeah. So all the businesses go kaput. So even museums, if we correlate like the hospitality industry and we offer some basic good high quality services, whether it's candidness, whether it's good bathrooms, whether it's that good ambience, then you're bound to succeed. We have, uh, we have been happy to know that most of our business has come through word of mouth. Anybody who has come, any visitor who has come to the museum has gone back and spoken highly of the museum. In fact, they've become our brand ambassadors. And as a result of which, uh, they've sent in many other uh, guests or their known acquaintances. Right. So that's been the secret of our success. Taking a leap into the future of the transport, here on display, we have this futuristic electric concept motorcycle. So this is the artist's vision for the future of the bike. Apart from the bike, on display there are some more vintage two-wheelers in this section ranging from Lambretta, Vijay Super, Vespa and also you can get the glimpse of some mopeds uh, in this area. And there is a section which is dedicated to the Hero Motorport which is uh, giving us a history of the setup of Hero Honda in India. We, we, we do have a conference facilities which can cater up to 300 people. It's a dose for the air Uh We also have uh, the open yawns which are about two and a half acres uh, where we have very large events, corporate events, family days, those kind of events. Uh, thus, of course, uh, there is one thing in our museum. We are very flexible, unlike typical Indian museums. If you tell me that I want to have a function in front of the cars, uh, I uh, we bifurcate the area so that you can have about a hundred people function with the, with the background of all the vintage vehicles, which no other police pro gives you in, in India. So apart from the history about the transport, the museum also presents some unique contemporary folk and tribal arts. So this section completely showcases the contemporary and folk art. So on display we have various three wheelers, auto rickshaws, the tribal truck art from Pakistan, 
Maruti 800 which is made like a wedding car. So this is a complete blend of history and art. We have it, we have sold it for wedding functions, we've sold it for dealer beats, we've sold it for product launches. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, you'd be happy to know, uh, we have one of the old steam engines, right. which, is, uh, which is fully functional. Mm -hmm. so it moves up and down once it once the engine is fired. And uh, there's this uh, the couple who had come and for their daughter's green ceremony, and they wanted that the stage was set up in, in front of the steam engine, and the Varmala happened there okay. for their wedding ceremony, and the train was going at the back up and down. Yeah. So the guests were very thrilled to see all that. Uh, and for them, for the youngsters who, yes. who actually uh, got engaged, yeah. for them it was uh, a unique experience. Thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey through the Heritage Transport Museum. We invite you to be a part of this unique experience.